we're going to talk about stemming, an important part of pre-processing text. So there are words that share a stem. For example, in consult, consultant, consultants, consultative, all of them share a single stem, consult. This means that all of them are related in meaning somehow, and that, for example, in a web search where we search for consultant, we also want the word consultants to be included in those searches. This is what uh, stemming can do for us. Let's just do a short review of what stemming is. So in there's an area of linguistics called morphology, and it studies the parts of words. So words can be separated into their individual components, and we call each of these components a morpheme. They're a minimal unit of meaning. Morphemes can be of two types. They can be stems, which are the core meaning-bearing units in the word. So for example, in unbearably, it's the stem is bare because it's this, this is to support something or to carry something. And by the way, remember that in English, roots and stems are roughly equivalent. So a word has a stem and it also has affixes, which are like grammatical functions that are appended to the word. So in unbearably, bare is the stem Un is a prefix that tells you that something is the negative of what we're talking about. Able is a suffix that tells you that you can do something. And I makes the word an adjective or an adverb. So why do we need to reduce words to their stems sometimes? This is because words that have the same stem are related and we probably want them to be classified together. So if we have a search engine, for example, and we search for a word like tacos, we probably want the, the website to return documents that include the word tacos, like in number three, three amazing tacos for you. But we also want the website to return documents that include the word taco the stem of tacos. Taco sale tomorrow, best taco recipes. These two words are related because they share a stem and we want the computer to, to be able to identify this. So sometimes we need to transform our text into its stems to perform stemming for the computer to see these relationships. So again, without performing stemming, the computer could not see that taco and tacos refer to the same object. There's several algorithms to implement stemming. A very common algorithm in English is called the Porter's algorithm. So I'm leaving it in, in the lower left of your screen. You have a website where we're going to demo the stemming and the actual implementation of, al of the algorithm, which uh, if you want to take a look at how it's actually implemented, I leave it for you there. So what this algorithm does is it uses regular expressions to try to decompose words and get to their um, steps, basically. So if you get a word like caresses, for example, it will transform the cis part into just the ss, caresses to caress. It would get something like ponies. It will trans. It will uh, replace the i e s for an e. Ponies to pony. If you get something like cats, you you will transform cats to cat. It then then performs another step again with regular expressions, where it tries to find words that it knows are verbs, for example, in a word list, and then does. And then replaces the ing in walking for zero. So it takes walking and makes walk. It takes plastered and makes plaster, replacing the ed to zero. In another step, it takes um, usual morphemes and simplifies them. So for example, ational, it replaces it for eight. Relational, relate. Digitizer, digitize. Operator, operate. And for uh, it takes some other uh, morphemes and transforms them to zero. For example, revival, it removes it so that the stem would be revive. Adjustable, it makes it adjust. Activate, active. So let me show you how this algorithm would work, the porter. 
And again, this is just one possible algorithm. This is one of the websites that we have on the lower left of the slides. And we're gonna write a simple sentence about tacos. Why not? Tacos are simply amazing. Have you tried tacos? Question mark. So we're gonna ask it to, to use the Porter stemmer and we'll see what happens. As you can see, tacos is stemmed into taco, R simply. So the R is not replaced by to be. This is because of the specific implementation of the porter. Simply is changed to simply, which is the stem for things like simplify, simplification, simple, and so forth. Amazing is replaced with amaze. And this is, uh, it's probably consuming a little bit too much, but it is the amaze is the stem for amazing. It, you, other, you have other words like amazement or amaze. Have you tried? So try to simplify to try and tacos is simplified to taco. So if you do this with a document, you will be able to identify that both of them contain the word taco, even if sometimes the word is taco and sometimes tacos. Again, the porter is just one algorithm to implement stemming. Uh, let's try another English one, the Lancaster algorithm, for example. As you can see here, we get slightly different decisions. So AR for R, we still have a maze and singular taco. And now we have have as the stem for have with an E. And this is correct. This is because have also appears in having, uh, halved, for example. Try taco is simplified. So um, another very common one is this noble stemmer, and you can see that it exists for other languages as well. This is related to the porter. As a matter of fact, it's an evolution of the porter. So it's the results are identical, I think. Taco are simply amazed. Have you tried taco? So, again, we can use this to find further similarities across text. If you want to look at the specific implementation of algorithms like Porter, I leave you with the URL on the presentation. Here is a part of the Porter algorithm where you can see that some of the morphemes are transformed to shorter forms. So in summary, stemming transforms tokens into their stems, and this can be useful when you conduct searches so that the computer can identify that tacos and taco are related. This process is language dependent. So notice that I chose English alternatives, and you do need a specific stemmer for the language you're working with. This process might be very complex. So we looked at a very simple example in English, but imagine what a stemming algorithm would look like in Arabic. It would need to figure out what the root consonants are and get rid of the vowels in the middle. So this process is heavily language dependent. And if you run, if you're using a small language, maybe you will not be able to perform stemming. Thank you for your time. And I'll see you in the chat forum, and I'll see you next week in more videos. Have a good evening, afternoon, morning.